Okay, so, um, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking in video 24 about Isaac Newton, who you would not really want to have at your party, your dinner party, say, whatever. He would probably just spend the time, evening, hidden in the closet, silently judging everybody. He was not a very fun guy to be around. He was suspicious, he was thin-skinned, he was insecure, but man, could he do some math. So that's what we remember him for. He also, in the latter part of his life, spent time uh, chasing counterfeiters throughout London and was uh, very successful at catching them, it turns out. That was his job. He worked for the Mint and chased counterfeiters and uh, brought them to justice. But before he did that, he revolutionized mathematics and physics. That's what we're here to talk about. And astronomy. So, he proposed in 1687 a book known 1687, a book known simply as the Principia, has a longer title than that. All these old books had wonderful, long, long-winded, frankly, quite tedious titles. So we shortened it to the Principia. And there were uh, really four laws in that book. We're going to look at the first three. We're only going to look at them very briefly. We're not going to spend a lot of time uh, on them in detail. If you want to see these laws in more detail, be a physics major, and you will get to know them deeply and well. But, you're not physics majors. Let's look at the first, these, 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 these three laws, known as the three laws of motion. Laws of motion. Um, so what I want to do is imagine, or let me ask you a question. What is the natural state of motion for a thing? Anything. Whether it's a... I'm not talking about cars that move themselves around. I'm talking about just objects, okay? Inanimate objects, not machines. Things like this pen, things like this building, things like the planet, things like, you know, whatever. What is the natural state of motion? Well, until the 17th century, people thought the natural state of motion was rest, right? Which makes sense. I let my pen go. It bounces around a while, but ends up at rest on the floor, right? I take a, a cart, like an ox cart, right? And the ox is pulling it, but as soon as the ox stops, stops pulling it, the cart stops moving. It sits there until you push it again, right? It was also assumed the earth was at rest. So the natural state of things, it was believed, was rest. But that is not the case, okay? The natural state of things, the natural motion... A, a body's natural motion is constant velocity. Could be zero, but might not be zero. For example, suppose we go out into space, right? This is astronomy. So suppose we go out into space and we take an object, say a baseball, and we just throw it. That baseball is going to move in a straight line at constant speed, not speeding up nor slowing down or changing direction. It's just going to go in a straight line. Constant velocity, what this, what this means for us is straight line, comma, neither speeding up nor slowing down. That is a body's natural motion. Straight line motion, neither speeding up nor slowing down. That baseball will go forever without speeding up. It's not going to speed up, not going to slow down. It's not going to change direction. Straight line, not changing direction. Okay, that's natural motion. That's not obvious, right? Because you take you, you you take an object like an eraser. I got an eraser here and, and scoot it across the table. It comes to rest, right? But the truth is, there has to be something making it come to rest. 
if we polished the table and polished the eraser and made it really smooth, it would go further, right? And if we polished it to where there was no friction at all, if we pushed it, it would just go on forever in a straight line across the table, as long as the table was big enough. So the natural motion of objects, of bodies, is straight line, neither speeding up nor slowing down. And in physics language, that means constant velocity. Okay, that is what things do. And the tendency of an object, the tendency of an object to retain its motion is called inertia. It took a long time to get the Titanic going. It has a lot of mass, it has a lot of inertia, it's big, right? It takes a lot of work to get it going, right? Because it's sitting there at rest. It wants to stay at rest. Its inertia makes it want to stay at rest. That's what inertia means. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of tendency to remain to re, to retain its motion and when it's sitting in the dock sitting at port the motion is not moving at all okay oh by the way this is also true when the velocity is zero okay uh, then going back to this a body's natural motion is constant velocity that includes velocity equals zero if I let that if I let that baseball just sit there it'll just sit there it won't go anywhere It'll maintain its motion, which is no motion. But if I give it this forward velocity here, it'll retain that straight line motion without going left to right forever. It's not going to stop. It's just going to keep going. So whether the velocity is 20 miles per hour baseball or whether the velocity is zero, all objects tend to retain its motion, Okay, even if that motion is no motion. So when the Titanic is sitting at port, there's no motion. It tends to retain that. It takes a long time to get the Titanic going. Okay? It's not easy to do. It has a lot of inertia. It has a lot of resistance to changing its motion. Okay? And that's also true once they've spotted the icebergs, right? If the Titanic hadn't had so much inertia, so much forward motion, it's hard to change it because it's so massive, then as soon as they turned the wheel, it would have avoided the iceberg, right? But as it was, they turned the wheel all the way hard right, starboard, or whatever it was, and they waited, and the boat kept on going forward because it had a lot of inertia. It had a lot of tendency to retain its motion. It has inertia. It's hard to get going when it has no motion, and it's hard to keep going once it, and it's hard to change its direction or change its velocity once it is going. Okay, so that's the first law. That's the first law. Let me grab a thing here. The second law tells us what is required to change the motion, whether the motion is zero velocity or something else. Remember when I say motion, that includes no motion. That includes, so right now, my eraser has no velocity. Its motion is no motion. Okay, its velocity is zero. In order to change that, I've got to apply, I've, I've, I've got to have something that's got to happen to start my eraser moving, right? That's what the second law deals with. The second law says that a force is required. Number two, only a force, how do I have it written here, can change a body's motion. That's the second law. Okay. Only a force can change a body's motion. For example, me pushing the eraser across the table, it comes to rest, right? A force must be acting on it. That force, the force can be in that case, the force would be friction. That's a force. That's what keeps the eraser from going off the end of the table, right? Friction. 
Uh, another one that's a force is, you know, contact forces. I push up against the glass, right? It's a contact force. Okay. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, weight. Right? When I take my pen and let it go, it's not moving right now, you notice. There it is. Busy not moving. But when I release it, it falls. It begins to move. There must be a force acting on it because it's, by, it's, it's the motion changed. It was velocity zero, but then it started going down and it started speeding up as it went. So a force must be acting on it. That force, of course, is gravity, which we call weight. Weight is a force. Okay felt by an object. You can call it the force of gravity or the weight, either one. It's the same thing. Okay. You'll hear me use the force of gravity. You'll hear me use the phrase weight. They mean the same thing. All right. So, for example, suppose that my baseball, after traveling in a straight line for a billion years, not speeding up, not slowing down, maintaining its natural motion, constant velocity, straight line motion, neither speeding up nor slowing down, comes close to a star. Actually, yeah, a star. Kind of like the sun, say. But another star. Well, it's going to feel a force. That straight line motion is going to no longer exist. The baseball, when it comes close to the star, is actually going to deflect like that because the baseball is going to feel a gravitational force. Okay, the baseball is going to feel a gravitational force. I'm going to erase this line here and redraw it a little bit. Here's my baseball here. So it's coming in from where we threw it. The baseball is going to start it's going to start to deflect like that. Because it's going to feel a force. It's going to feel the force of gravity is going to experience its own weight. It's going to fall in toward the sun. That force is changing the baseball's motion. That's what's required to change the motion. The last law, the third law, it's not called the last law, it's called the third law, is that for every action there is an equal and opposite, you've heard this before, reaction. Okay. Now what this means for our picture here, baseball moves along this line here. So let's think of the baseball when it's right there. That baseball is feeling a force toward the sun. The sun is attracting, we'll say more about gravity in the next video, video 25, we'll say more about gravity. But that baseball is being attracted by the sun, and the sun is also being attracted by the baseball. Okay, the sun is actually drawn, the star rather, whatever, is drawn a little bit toward the baseball, even as the baseball falls toward the sun. So, another example of that is when I push on the board, the glass here, with a certain force, the glass is going to push back on me with the same force. Okay? Forces, oops, forces come in pairs is the point. Like these two here. When I stand on the ground, I feel it's push up on me. That's what keeps me from falling down into the basement. The ground is pushing up on me, keeping me from falling down. But the ground also feels my force. Okay, so I push down on the ground, the ground pushes up on me. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity, for example, is attractive. These two forces are equal and opposite. So that's a super quick look at Newton's three laws of motion. We're going to spend the next video looking at the one that's most important for us. These three are all going to come in throughout our discussions throughout the rest of the class, but it's the next one, the fourth law that showed up in his book, Principia,
that's going to be really important to us, and that law is the law of gravity. See you then.